below. This is One Great Earth. My name is Dan. I hope you are well. Start off by looking at temperatures. North Africa, Saudi Arabia, Baltimore. Going down a minor amount, you can call it from 115 degrees minor. But 115 degrees going down 15, 20 degrees, pretty major. Hopefully people are able to resume society. <laughs> it's uh, incredibly hot. Pretty staggering temperatures. We go way up north, Canada. Temperature is still increasing, all the same. We have a current that goes northeast out of the Gulf of Mexico. Still churning, still trying to make it. I won't ever make it. We are seeing a failure of a major current, as well as the one here. Drake's Passage. A lot of weather on the East Coast. This is an article from ProPublica. Nike pledged to shrink its carbon footprint. It just slashed the staff charged with making that happen. Eight years ago, the world's largest sport apparel brand made a bold commitment. Nike was embarking on what it called a moonshot, doubling its business while halving its impact on a warming planet. Get there, then CEO Mark Parker said the Oregon-based company's innovations and environmental sustainability would become a powerful engine for growth, a catalyst capable of changing industries. The company's chief sustainability officer at the time, Hannah Jones, said achieving the goal would take innovation on a scale we've never seen before. Nike's sustainable innovation team embodied the commitment. 
It looks for environmentally friendly new materials like leather made from kelp and foams made from plants that could replace some of the hundreds of millions of pounds of rubber, leather, and cotton used in traditional Nike products. It assisted in testing and refining the foam in new Pegasus 41 that Nike says cut the carbon footprint of the shoes midsole by at least 43%. So it came as a surprise one Sunday night in December when, dozen, when a dozen or so people on the team got summoned to a mandatory meeting the next morning. In a Zoom bef call before sunrise, they learned why. The team was being eliminated. The vice president who ran the team was gone. The call lasted less than 10 minutes. It was the first in a series of deep cuts that one former Nike employee called the sustainability bloodbath. With sales flatlining, Nike executives in December announced a plan to cut costs by over $2 billion USD uh, over three years. Those cuts have dealt a big blow to Nike's sustainability workforce. Nike has laid off about 20% of employees who work primarily on sustainability initiatives the Oregon, Oregon Live, and ProPublica found. Roughly another 10% left voluntarily or were transferred to other jobs. The cuts to its sustainability work staff, of about 150 people, were far deeper than Nike's 2% reduction company and 7% reduction at its Oregon headquarters. The estimates are based on state employment records, a review of LinkedIn posts and interviews with more than 10%, 10 current and former Nike staff members who spoke on the condition of anonymity because they are not allowed to speak to the media or are looking for jobs in the industry. I'm truly shocked that so many sustainability roles would be eliminated. I would have never thought that from an industry leader, never in a million years. Really sounds like they didn't want them to begin with. Nike's elimination of such a substantial share of its environmental sustainability staff is a stunning turn in the company's 52-year history. After emerging from the shadow of labor abuses in the former factories in the 1990s, the apparel behemoth helped shack, I'm sorry, helped spark the corporate responsibility movement. As the public's attention turned to corporate impact on the environment, a, ch a chasten Nike aimed to lead. We're not walking away from sustainability. I mean, full stop, we are committed. What's left? Keep moving it down, keep eliminating positions. So no kinder here on the left side is the sustainability officer for Nike before. carbon target setting working group began gathering every other Wednesday, 90 minutes by Zoom and in person to develop a detailed plan to drastically shrink Nike's carbon footprint. As participants in the International Science Based Targets Initiative, Nike and 5,000 other companies pledged to match the goals of the Paris Climate Agreement. Nike promised to reduce its emissions by 30% by 2030 throughout its supply chain.
The result was a plan so important that it would eventually require executive approval on the Nike's board's review. It was still being finalized when the staffing cuts began, the two sources said. About half of employees involved in Nike's carbon target planning were laid off or transferred to non-sustainability jobs, according to two sources the news organization used to identify names. The list included some members who would have been responsible for implementing the steps recommended for ratcheting down emissions. Now you have a stool with one leg missing. Sounds just like all the other empty promises by companies that have a huge carbon footprint. They have no, it's not necessary for them to reduce and reuse, recycle. That onus is on us as consumers. But when the product cannot be recycled or broken down, I don't think that's our problem. Probably our problem for buying products like it. It's not a good trendsetter if you have a company like Nike that's pulling out of it after putting a lot of work into sustainability resources. They just cut it out because they don't like what they're seeing, they don't like what they're hearing, they don't like what is being recommended. Whatever the, whatever the reason, whatever the cost. It's just bizarre to me that Nike would want to step back, having been the leader, Wellen said. If they're moving away from sustainability, driving innovation, that is the Nike brand, what does it become then? Disruptive innovation would drive growth. He didn't use the word sustainability once. So, just window dressing. Just word salads. It's just broken promises and fired employees, laid off employees, terminated employees. Sounds like it came out as a great shock to everybody. They were doing work, they, they said. They were doing the work. They were getting ready to propose a lot of game-changing ideas. But the higher-ups, that might be just what is considered meddling. They don't want bottom line being hurt. Nike's leadership failed. Can you blame them? And they have absolutely no requirement to do anything. They don't have to do anything. It's sad, but companies like this that take off, that lead, charge to only fall off, it ripples through the industry. It ripples through the economy. That's not just these jobs that have been lost and people sacked. It's um, obvious that they didn't like what was being found out and how much waste was being discovered.
Seals with rabies attach beachgoers in South Africa, raising alarm for rabid marine animals. Eight first seals with rabies have been reported in the waters off South Africa over the past month, confirming that the rabies disease has also infected marine mammals. In recent weeks, local reports stated that seals have been biting surfers and swimmers in Cape Town, a popular beach site for locals, both locals and tourists. The threat posed by marine mammals have forced some beachgoers to flee from the waters. While seal bites alone are dangerous, being infected with rabies is highly life-threatening. This is because the fatal viral disease, which is mostly known to infect mammals like dog, cats, and rodents, has a high mortality rate. Yet medical experts say rabies-related death can be prevented when the infected individual is treated immediately. Globally, rabies has killed multiple people. Compared to great white sharks, seals in general have been perceived by the public as friendly or sociable towards humans. However, there's been a spate of seal attacks in South Africa following the COVID-19 pandemic. In late 2021, scientists and local authorities observed an increased seal aggression towards people in Cape Town, which has been a hot spot for shark attacks. Based on reports on Thursday, July 11th, nine seals with rabies have been confirmed by authorities. This comes after some of the marine mammals in Cape Town called Cape Fur Seals have become aggressive towards surfers and swimmers along the beaches of the South African port city. Currently, scientists are determining where and when the rabies virus infected the local seal population. Rabies has the highest mortality rate on Earth, 99.9%. Terrible to hear, and they're in the water, it's going to bite you. It's not just a question if they will or won't. They will definitely bite you. And you have to seek immediate treatment. Not just because it's a seal bite, but it could be rabid. That is terrifying because you can't dodge these things. You can't punch them in the face underwater. Eighty-one killed in 24 hours as Israel continues targeting UN schools, shelters, in Gaza. From CommonDreams.org, Israeli attacks have killed 81 Palestinians. For roughly the last 24 hours, including an attack on the United Nations run school shelter in Nusrat refugee camp in central Gaza, according to data released by the Gaza's health ministry on Wednesday. The attack was one of many in the last two days across the Gaza Strip. They're targeting schools that are run by UN RAW. People are dying in numbers that are just horrific. Gaza is destroyed. Niger floods toll rises to 53, over 18,000 affected. UN flooding caused by 
heavy rains lashing Niger since June has resulted in 53 deaths and impacted over 18,000 people. As the West African country struggles with the effects of climate change, the United Nations Agency announced on Wednesday. An earlier report from the Interior Ministry, published on June 20th, recorded 21 deaths and nearly 6,000 people affected nationwide. As of July 15th, the floods have claimed 53 lives, affecting 2,501 households and a total of 18,098 people, according to the United Nations Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs, or OCHA report. Floodwaters have caused extensive damage, destroying 1,636 homes and 29 classrooms and killing 10,930 livestock, the agency said, citing the Niger Ministry of Humanitarian Action and Disaster Management. It is the rainy season. Tens of thousands of people affected. Rental rains flood Toronto, causing power outage, traffic disruption. Out of Brazil. Brazil has 96% of Pantanal fires under control. That is good news coming out of Brazil. These fires ravage the land. Massive fish die-off in Fremont's Lake Elizabeth points to decades of neglect. City officials say they are taking steps to improve the lake, but environmentalists say more needs to be done. The death of a thousand fish in Fremont's Lake Elizabeth shocked residents and drew widespread news coverage this month. But in reality, problems at the city's 83-acre lake go much deeper and stretch 
stretch back decades. The city maintains the die-off was simply a result of the heat, but Joyce Blueford, president of the Math Science Nucleus, a nonprofit organization that works to restore local watersheds, said Fremont and Alameda County Flood Control and Water Conservation District, which mostly owns Lake Elizabeth, have failed to maintain it. You have a lot of problems. It shouldn't be this bad, Blueford said. This is net, 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 net. She says the shuffling of responsibilities in city departments have left the lake in limbo and that Fremont continues to hire consultants who don't do any significant work to care for it. About 90% of the dead fish found in the pond due to the heat were carp. Afghanistan, 40 dead, hundreds injured after heavy rainstorms in eastern Afghanistan. 35 people have died and more than 230 others have been injured in heavy rains and storms in Nangarhar province in eastern Afghanistan. The provincial, provincial administration of the Taliban-led government said on July 15th in a statement. Meteorological Department of Afghanistan's Taliban-led government predicted heavy rains and floods in 12 Afghan provinces. Let's see now. The 
hellishly hot southern Europe bakes under heat wave as temperatures top 104 degrees Fahrenheit. Rome. The Italian Health Ministry placed 12 cities under the most severe heat warning Tuesday as a wave of hot air from Africa baked southern Europe and the Balkans and sent temperatures over 40 degrees Celsius or 104 degrees Fahrenheit with the worst still to come. The brutal heat wave. Croatia reported the highest ever temperatures of the Adriatic Sea, with the thermometer reaching nearly 30 degrees Celsius or 86 degrees Fahrenheit at the southern walled city of Dubrovnik, the country's most popular tourism spot. In Serbia, the state power company record, reported record consumption Tuesday due to the use of air conditioning. Climate change is altering the length of days on Earth, uh, according to new research. Days are getting longer as global temperatures continue to rise, new research shows. As ice sheets in the Earth's poles melt, the redistribution of mass from the resulting sea level rises, increasing the length of day at unprecedented rate, according to a study published in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences on Monday. For millennia, Earth's length of day has been gradually increasing by a few milliseconds per century. The increase is largely due to the moon's gravitational pull, which has gradually slowed Earth's rotation as well as the glacial isostatic adjustment process. That is, the movement of molten rock in the planet's mantle towards the polar regions, specifically in northern hemisphere. For millennia, Earth's length of day has been gradually increasing by a few milliseconds per century. The increase is largely due to the moon's gravitational pull, which has gradually slowed Earth's rotation, as well as the glacial isostatic adjustment process, that is, the movement of molten rock in the planet's mantle towards the polar region, specifically in the northern hemisphere. Sarindra Adhikara, Adhikara, Adhikari, a geophysicist at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, 
One of the study's authors told ABC News. Fluctuations in sea level have caused the length of Earth's day to vary between 0.3 and 1.0 milliseconds per century during the 20th century. But since 2000, the length of day has increased by a rate of about 1.33 milliseconds per century that researchers found. Coordinated Universal Time, or UTC, was made the international standard for time measurement in 1960. But the UTC may ultimately need to incorporate a negative leap second due to the planet's inconsistent rotation, spurred by climate change. The impact of losing a second could have severe consequences on universal computing systems. Tresia Tavella, a member of the Time Department at the Inter International Bureau of Weights and Measures in France, wrote in an article accompanying the study, Satellite navigation, software, telecommunication, trade, and even space travel rely on precise UTC timekeeping. In the future, Modern society may need to rely on quantum or atomic clocks for accurate timekeeping and precision navigation, Adhikari said, adding, that enables us to do more precise navigation from Earth and space. world's rarest whale may have washed up on New Zealand beach. Carcass may be perfect specimen of spade-toothed whale and has been transported to whale-sized freezer just in time. Very rare animal. This is the first time that One of these have been caught in such condition. Very large. The world's rarest whale may have washed up on a New Zealand beach. A spade toothed whale.
New Jersey is one of America's fastest warming states, data shows. New Jersey is heating up faster than any other state in the Northeast, facing a region with rapidly rising temperatures, according to data gathered by a nonprofit research organization. The cause of It looks like breaking news that President Joe Biden tests positive for COVID. UK doctors advise to cut down on prescriptions and blood tests to tackle climate change. Doctors are uniquely trusted to discuss public health threats like climate change. Doctors should reduce unnecessary prescriptions and blood tests in a bid to curb profession's contribution to the climate, change, climate crisis. That, according to new guidance released by the UK's Royal College of Physicians, RCP, this week. Healthcare pollution, so we're not just talking about plastic, non-reusable items. So, regarding my YouTube channel, my last video that I uploaded, that I streamed on Twitch, was uh, It with a 18 plus restricted age, age restriction, which is strange because I didn't even swear. I'm not pulling up shocking content. So it is very frustrating for YouTube to just constantly pound my channel.
What do doctors think of the new guidelines? Changing climate is directly impacting our minds, brains, and bodies. It's not just around us, but within us. As doctors, our role is to support patients to learn and understand how this will impact their individual health and our collective public health. New Jersey is one of America's fastest warming states, data shows. Global warming is hitting the entire Northeast particularly hard, according to figures provided by Climate Central, a nonprofit group. New Jersey is heating up faster than any other state in the Northeast facing a region with rapidly rising temperatures according to data gathered by nonprofit research organization. The cause of New Jersey's devious distinction is most likely a combination of factors including the warming of the ocean bordering the coastal state and overdevelopment of in some areas, experts say. But what is certain they added is that the state and the Northeast in general will continue to see more heat waves like the one last month, as well as worsening storms and floods. New Jersey is ground zero for some of the worst impacts of climate change, including extreme heat and considerable increases in flood risk, while average annual temperatures across the country have increased about by about 2.5 degrees since 1970. Annual temperatures in New Jersey have increased by roughly 3.5 degrees, said Lauren Casey, a meteorologist with Climate Central, a nonprofit organization that gathered the temperature data. According to the group's findings, New Jersey is the third fastest warming state in the country. I've been a state climatologist for 33 years, and I've never seen a statistic like this. I thank you for joining me here. Thank you for your time. Thank you for watching. Very frustrating. There's so much to talk about.
heat island phenomenon describes how cities with all their concrete and asphalt soak up heat making them several degrees warmer than surrounding areas newark the most populated city in new jersey for example can reach 100 degrees in the summer while other spots in the state stay in the 90s What else we got to get into? China rocked by cooking oil contamination scandal. BBC. The Chinese government says it will investigate allegations that fuel tankers have been used to transport cooking oil after carrying toxic chemicals without being cleaned properly between loads. Controversy has spread online as social media users express concerns about potential food contamination. Tankers used for transporting fuel were found to be carrying food products like cooking oil and syrup and were not decontaminated correctly according to state-run Beijing News. Tankers were transporting cooking oil and contaminated fuel trucks was said to have been so widespread it was considered an open secret in the industry, according to one driver quoted by the newspaper. The case is the latest blow to public trust in the Chinese government's ability to enforce food safety standards. The controversy has been a top trending topic on Chinese social media in recent days. On Weibo, the country's equivalent to X, formerly known as Twitter, there have been tens of thousands of posts about the scandal, which have racked up millions of views. Food safety is the most important issue, a comment liked more than 8,000 times said. Another comment said, as an ordinary person, surviving in this world itself is an amazing thing already. Many compared it to the 2008 San Lu milk scandal, in which some 300,000 children became sick and at least six died after drinking powdered milk contaminated with high levels of industrial chemical melamine. Much worse than that scandal. In China, tankers are not limited to any particular type of goods, so in theory, carry food products straight after transporting coal-based oils. The claims involve several major Chinese companies, including a subsidiary state-owned Sinograin and the Hopeful Grain and Oil Group. Sinograin has said it is investigating whether food safety regulations were being followed correctly. The company also said that it will that it said it will immediately suspend the use of any trucks that are found that have fallen foul of the rules. A hopeful grain represent, representative told government controlled newspaper Global Times that it was conducting a thorough self inspection. Chinese government has said food safety officials would carry out the investigations into the allegations. They have promised to punish 
any companies, individuals involved in wrongdoing. They have also vowed to immediately publish the findings of their investigation. Illegal enterprise. Illegal enterprises and relevant responsible persons will be severely punished in accordance with the law and will not be tolerated. State broadcaster CCTV said at the local level, both the Hebei and Taijin provincial governments have said they are also looking into the matter. Awful. Very dangerous, very deadly. A lot of ramifications. Alright. I appreciate your time. I thank you for watching. If you haven't already, please click the follow button on the stream. Thank you very much. Thank you for joining me. Please take care.